Well, hello to the First Baptist family and to the friends of First Baptist. This is our midweek update for November 17th, 2021. This is our 321, three things I want you to know about, uh, two chapters in the Bible to read, one thing I want you to pray about in the coming week. Okay, so here's the three things I want you to know. Tonight, uh, First Baptist midweek, we're having a bedlam chili cook-off tonight, dress in your favorite uh, team colors. Uh, we have some people who've kind of signed up for a chili competition. I may have an entry as well. And so just come up tonight uh, come for some great classes at 6 o'clock and a free chili uh, cook-off at 5 o'clock. Just be a, a fun family time to uh, experience together with your family and with your church family. So that's tonight. Uh, next Monday night, the Monday before Thanksgiving, is our community Thanksgiving service. And we, we partner with several churches in the area. Uh, it started with just four churches, and now we've kind of expanded that. So our community Thanksgiving service will be next Monday night, 7 o'clock, at First Baptist Church, North Tulsa. Anthony Scott, our good friend, is hosting that community Thanksgiving service, and so you'll want to be a part of, of that. And so that's this coming uh, Monday night. Then the third thing is, remember, and I'm going to treat this as one announcement, all the opportunities for generosity that we have uh, in this season. Sweet potatoes and stuffing for John 3, our missions offering of $250,000 that's going to fund missionaries and compassion centers, and we'll pray about that at the end. And then, um, uh, of course, the, the opportunity of working with Trav's Coats for Kids. Uh, that's, that's not any monetary giving. This will be giving your time. Uh, we are the distribution point for that this year at our two caring centers. You can sign up online, and this is a great opportunity not only to serve with you, but community group, kids, family members, make this um, an opportunity for you to practice generosity with your time. So those are the three things I want you to know. Two chapters in the Bible I want you to read this week, or I invite you to read, is going to be Genesis 37 and Genesis 39. So, so I, as much as I can, I'm choosing back-to-back -back chapters, but these two chapters focus on the story of Joseph. Now I want you to remember who he is. Okay, He is still considered um, he's kind of on that cusp of being one of the patriarchs. Abraham, his son Isaac, his son Jacob. Jacob had many sons, <laughs> uh, and one of those was Joseph. And you get a feel. Here's, here's the two things I want you to know as you read Genesis 37. Joseph was a punk, first of all. He was just a punk, and you, you kind of read through this. That's a very theological word, by the way. Um, you read this. He tattled on his brothers. He was his dad's favorite. He was Israel's favorite son. Gave him special gifts. There's that coat of, of many colors. Um, and then he really kind of, Joseph almost goes off the deep end here, talking about these dreams that he had of his own grandeur, where his brothers and his parents would eventually kind of serve him. He was just a punk. You know, he, he thought he knew it all. He thought he knew what was best. He thought he was the best thing since sliced bread, all those things. And as we saw in Israel's life, as we saw in Jacob's life, sometimes God needs to break us down. In fact, I, I mentioned this quote last week. I was reminded, it's by A.W. Tozier, God does not use a person greatly until he hurts him deeply. That had to happen in Jacob's life as he became Israel. It's also happening here in, in Joseph's life. So, um, so he's sold by his brothers into slavery because he was such a punk. But now here's the second thing I want you to know. Not only was he a punk, um, I, I just love using that word, he also is a picture, a kind of a foreshadowing of Christ here. Um, you, you see some of the things that are happening in Joseph's story. It's, it's just a foreshadowing, just uh, almost reminiscent of the story of Jesus. Uh, they stripped him of his robe. Um, they threw him in a cistern. Jesus was probably thrown into a holding cell when he was... In fact, if you go to Israel, you can visit the cistern, the underground water storage tank, where it's believed Jesus was held before his trial. He was sold for 20 pieces of silver. You know, you just get this. There's many echoes here of, of the story of Christ. And here's the key idea, that his brothers were selling him into slavery, not knowing what they were doing was actually going to bring about their own deliverance later on. As Joseph would go down to Egypt, he would put some things in place to protect his family from the famine that had come across that part of the world. So they were, they were doing something that they weren't fully aware that would be for their own deliverance. Same is true for those who killed Christ. They didn't realize that what they were doing 
by taking Jesus to the cross was actually for their own deliverance. So we see a foreshadowing here of Christ, a picture of Christ and Joseph. Don't miss that. Pick, pick up on that. Then in chapter 39, this is the part B of his story, as God continues to bring and break Joseph down, he's going to ultimately take him into prison, uh, there's this little event with Potiphar's wife. Uh, he sold as a slave to an Egyptian official. Sad thing about this is for Potiphar, it's probably not the first time his wife had hit on a servant. Maybe he knew what was going on, maybe he didn't, maybe he was just denying reality, but, but things like this, as you hear her story, this was not the only time this happened. You know, Joseph would have been one of many servants that maybe she flirted with. What, what I want you to notice here is a great way to deal with temptation. Uh, it says here that, uh, that uh, Joseph, in, in verse 10 of chapter 39, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. You know the greatest way to avoid temptation is not even to give it an opportunity. He just made a decision, I'm not even going to be in her presence. Now, there were events that happened that were beyond his control, but one of the greatest ways to avoid temptation is to not give it the opportunity to surface in, in the first place. And, and I'll let you kind of apply that to your life. Now, there is something interesting that I, I find here. So both of these stories, what they have in common is a coat. Uh, the coat of many colors that was stripped from Joseph, soaked in blood, given to his father. And then here Potiphar's wife hangs on to his coat as an example of, or as, a, as evidence, rather, of, of Joseph taking advantage of her. And I put evidence in air quotes right there. just seemed that Joseph had a tough time holding on to a coat, right? So it seems to be a, a thread, no pun intended, a thread that goes through this story as God is breaking Joseph down, stripping him, of his status and of his dignity, but God never uses a person greatly until he hurts them deeply. So that's Genesis um, 37 and 39, dealing with one of the patriarchs, Joseph's story. We'll pick up on that more next week. So here's the one thing I want you to pray for this week. Uh, pray for the Compassion Center that we're going to build in Bolivia. Bolivia has the lowest per capita income of any country in South America. And one of the issues that many people have in Bolivia who live in rural areas is getting clean water. So the Compassion Center that we're going to build in Bolivia is going to focus on children ages 1 through 3, kind of start there, and work with their families to establish clean water sources. And then as clean water is available, of course, a child will stay healthy. They'll be able to learn, they'll be able to grow, and they'll be able to develop. So this Compassion Center... Uh, and in fact, the name of the town is Chacabamba. I just love saying that. That's just a fun name to say, Chacabamba in Bolivia. This is going to be a place where we're going to work with local families, local churches, to establish clean water, to have healthy children, and to help them grow to know the Lord. Pray for our Compassion Center in Bolivia that we'll be funding through our mission offering this week. Love you guys. Love serving as your pastor. Let's bring good news to our world. God bless you. Bye-bye.